presentation at Farm Tech 2013. Really, really had a huge crowd. The place was packed. We're talking about 150 bushel wheat in Western Canada, the potential of that, and how that's been accomplished in some areas of Ontario. What are some of the things you talked about with farmers? Yeah, so what I really focused on, Sean, was kind of this whole nitrogen by fungicide interaction that, that's worked so well in Ontario. And in Ontario, it's been a 16 to 20 percent yield increase in one fell swoop. And, and we've talked about that before, right? It's, it's nitrogen is one, fungicides are one, but one plus one doesn't equal two, it equals three or maybe even more depending on, on your system. And so that's what I brought here to the growers mainly to push them to say, you know what? You have the day length out here. You have the season exactly the same as what they get in Europe in terms of the number of hours of sunshine and your cooler temperatures. And you should have tremendous yield potential. On years when you don't get enough rainfall, everything falls apart. I get that. But if you don't push and try, you're de dead in the water. So now that you have a chance with some new genetics, that's the other key. So, so this whole concept of getting into CPS varieties or general purpose varieties with high yield potential, low protein, let's give it and go and see if we can't do it. Because I think, I think it can be done here as well. So what are some of those things you feel that we're trapped in? Those things that we need to kind of break loose the chains practices that we've been doing that you maybe have challenged the group a little bit on? Yeah, so, so absolutely. There's a couple of key ones, and, and one of them is around planting date. And so I was out here 10 years ago, and I challenged the growers then to frost seed. And that's, that's a really cool practice that has increased spring wheat yields in Ontario by 40%. If we can get it in early, ahead of that wet spell in the spring when you can't go to the field, then suddenly it's growing through that wet spell. Now I have a stand, and if I can get the wheat crop to head out somewhere around June 21st, or as close to June 21st as possible, guess what I've done? I've now got it into my grain fill period in the longest days of the year with the most sunshine, the most solar radi radiation, the most photosynthate to put the most grain in the bin. So that's one of the things that I, I think there's tremendous potential out here. Another one is on row width. And I cannot understand why in Western Canada we are on 12 inch rows. Well, actually, I can understand it because out here the concept isn't do better in, in a small acreage. Uh, the concept is wider, bigger, faster, and if I, the further apart my shanks are, the wider unit I can pull and, and the more acres I can do per day. Eh, I'm not interested in acres per day. I'm interested in bushels per acre and dollars in the bank. Nowhere else in the world at this latitude would they ever consider 12 inch uh, spacings on wheat. Not a chance. Go to four inches. That's what they do in Europe. In Ontario, as far south as we are, we have to be in seven and a half. And I showed some data where at 15s, we lose 10% in yield in Ontario. So how is it that, that you're not losing yield out here? So, so that's another one. The other one was planting depth is another key one, but that's a, a hoe drill situation versus a disc drill. Just hoe drills are junk. Buy a real drill drive on. Some people would say in a four inch row, you, you close the canopy, right? Aren't you gonna have more leaf disease and more, more pressure on the canopy? Well, okay, we're in a dry climate. How much leaf disease do we get now? Do we get a little more leaf disease? Maybe. But if we have decent genetics, we'll have some resistance, and we have fungicides to manage that. And, and which do you want? Do you want to manage for yield, or do you want to run scared from disease? I know which one I'm at. I'm a yield guy. Let's give it. Some people, would, some Western Canadian farmers would scoff at, well, Europe's Europe, right? These, these, we're, we're bigger here, right? You know, you get some of the same thing with Ontario, right? The, the land is smaller. We shouldn't be locked into those challenges or those differences. Well, okay, so what are, what's your land price now? Yeah, I, I hear some people in Alberta talking $6,000 per acre for land. Okay, come on, if you're at that, then, then suddenly just being big no longer works. You need return per acre. And so big is great. I'm, everybody likes to be big, right? We're all testosterone farmers, man, big and diesel smoke and give it. But the reality is that if I can produce 10 bushels per acre more, off my acres, I'm going to eat you alive because you aren't going to be competitive with me. So it's not just about big. Thanks a lot, Pete. I oh, appreciate the, the conference and, and the opportunity to be out here.